My next project for my daughter's 30th birthday is a memory box. People can write their favorite memory and put it in the box. And for a box, I chose this paper mache book. And I've already added the gesso to it. And next I will paint it and then add decorations. I don't think that I will add texture. If you'd like to see texture added to paper mache, check out my 1988 textured and painted and varnished numbers. The letters are actually sort of a shiny metal look to them and the word memories is a sticker that actually is clear so I think that should look okay. I should be able to attach all of that after it has been uh, painted. To start with I laid out my letters and then I am using my large sewing ruler to see where I want them placed and I can kind of make a mental note that they're going to be about an inch and a half from the top and they will extend down to about a total of about five inches. So um, the reason that's important is that um, when I, I, I might add a little bit of texture, sort of like a box around the letters, and that way I can paint the inside of that box a slightly lighter color of blue and um, that'll help set off that area. It'll be kind of like the title of the book. Okay, as I mentioned, I have already added the gesso to the box. I painted the inside and all of the sides on the outside. And for that, I used the Liquitex Basics acrylic gesso. And it adds a little bit of stiffening and it adds just a slightly rough surface that helps hold the paint. If I hadn't done that, the paint would have just sunk right into the uh, paper mache. So anytime you're starting with a new canvas, even if it has already been treated with gesso or you're working with any kind of paper mache or wood product, you really need to add gesso first. I just added basically one coat to the whole thing and on the front I added a second coat and it dries fairly quickly. So now what I'm going to do is make that little rectangular area. And for that I'm using my permanent patch 101. I'm going to see how this works. So we just run a line across here. I don't really want it on the ruler. I just wanted to use the ruler to kind of help make sure that I keep the line straight. Okay, so as you saw, the um, palette knife was didn't really work the way I wanted it to because I really couldn't control the line. Okay, now I'm ready to paint the box and for that I'm using a straight edge brush and I have the colors cobalt blue, cerulean blue, Prussian blue, Payne's gray, and white. Because just like I like to do with a lot of things, I want to have a mixture of color. Payne's gray I use in a lot of my paintings and if you watch many of my videos you'll see that I, I very often use it. That's this dark color right here and it almost looks black but it's not quite black. Black is pretty harsh so I don't use it very often. Towards the edges it can be a little bit darker kind of as if it got a little scuffed up along the edge a little dirty. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of the outside of the box and then I'll let that dry. Okay, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that it, I'll, I'll add a little touch up here. This happened because of flipping it open and shut and things, it kind of cracked along there. So I'll add a little touch up there when it's all finished. And it's fairly dry now. It's just been a couple of hours. I was thinking I might have to go back and add some more paint, but I decided I really don't have to. 
And one thing I should mention is when not using the Permanent Patch 101 or Permanent Patch 102, um, sometimes I have to add more layers of gesso. And you can kind of see through this a little bit. If I come up close. Uh, it's not a real solid layer of paint, but it's solid enough. It just looks like an old book. And I think that this is just fine. I don't really need to add more paint. So right now I'm going to paint inside here and also I'll do something in here. I think I may have that be more of a gold. And this, that looks like pages, I will paint using warm gray and white and I might throw in a little bit of blue. I'll start out with kind of a larger brush and I may change later. It's kind of a nice color. The white is very good for coverage. So this just kind of gives a feeling of pages. It doesn't have to be real perfect. It'll automatically have some streaks in it if I pick up a little bit of one color and a little bit of another color on the brush. And I think that probably when I'm all finished, I will come back and add a coat of varnish because I think that'll protect the whole thing. And I should mention I also painted these edges. So you almost can't tell that that's painted, but it's just a streaky mixture of the titanium white and warm gray. Just dipping a little bit of water on my brush as I go along. I live in Phoenix and paint dries quickly here. Now those of you just starting to follow me, if you're not real familiar with the paints that I use, I use a lot of Grumbacher brand paint. And this is all acrylic and I can purchase it at any craft supply or artist supply store. And I'm, I've been real happy with it. There are many other brands as well. Golden and Liquitex are also very good brands of paint. Now where I got a little bit on the blue, I will touch that up later and I have other little areas too. So I will let this dry now. I'm pretty happy with that. I'll just make sure that I get the sides, edges here. Okay, I painted this area a mixture of warm gray, white, and cerulean blue. And then I did go back and touch up just a couple of little spots along the edges and things that I thought needed it. And now I'll let this thoroughly dry and then I will paint the inside. And I'll paint that little area there. For the inside of the box, I started by painting the inside piece here a mixture of titanium white and my Deco Art Dazzling Metallics Gold. I was thinking I needed to have the white to help it blend and move better because I hadn't put on extra gesso. But I'm um, finding though that the inside of the box with only the gold all by itself and no white blended in actually looks just fine. I, I didn't need to do anything. So I'm going to let this completely dry and then I'll go over it again with just gold. I could leave it like that if I wanted it to look like paper that has some gold shimmer in it, but I think I like just the plain gold. So I'll go ahead now and finish painting the interior gold here. And when that has dried totally, I will repaint that. And then it'll look like the inside of the box is lined with gold paper. This has dried now to the point where I can attach the letters. And I'm going to have to make sure that everything is centered. It's easy to do with the word memories because it 
it comes on this background piece and I just lay that down. The word Aaliyah though is a little bit different because each letter is individual. So the way that I start with something like that is I find the center line and then I find where the letters go and I start with the center and I put the center letters or the center letter. In this case, I think it'll be between two. And then I move out to the left and out to the right. And that way I know that the whole thing is staying centered. And I'll use my large sewing ruler for that. Okay, and looking at this, if I place the E pretty much at the center, maybe just ever so slightly to the left of the center, that will space out pretty nicely. It's not always the same number of letters on each side because letters can have different widths. For example, the L is much more narrow than the H. So I should actually put the E slightly to the left. And I don't have to worry about this being absolutely perfect, but um, I, I want it to look pleasing to the eye. So when I lay this down, I'll make sure that the E is a little bit to the left of center. Okay, now I have the letters down. And one thing I can say is when you put these letters down, they are there to stay. My E was ever so slightly crooked, but I had been concerned earlier about whether or not these letters would stay on. But once they're down, they're down. And the word memories, it's the same way. It sticks really well. I'm sure if you pulled hard enough on it, you could break them off, but I, they're, they're very secure. So I'm very happy with that. The word memories came on a sticker sheet like this. There were two sheets and it's by a company named Momenta. And you can find this at www.momenta.com. I bought them at Hobby Lobby. For the raised lettering, I got those on sheets as well. They come under the name thickers and they're by American Crafts.